So I had the complete support of all of my peers around me, and all of them were do, trying to do the, the, the best job that they possibly could. Um, and Lockstock became Lockstock. Before we move on from Lockstock, um, I just want to recount this story. You know, I did I did an interview for BAFTA, and some of the guys watching this will have seen my BAFTA interview um, down in Brighton last week, and I'm covering a lot of the same stuff. But, you know, it, 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 I can't get away from this stuff because it is my life story. What I want to say now about, about Guy Ritchie and about sound is this. When he got into the cutting room on Lockstock, uh, he, you know, he had an offline editor, and at that point he hadn't found his his, his editor and he said uh, he said there was a there was a whip pen and the camera went straight onto someone's face and and he said right I want you to put a whoosh on that and this offline editor said well, what do you mean a whoosh and the guy said I want you to to put a whoosh on it you know what a whoosh is <laughs> and the editor said I sorry I don't know what you're talking about and guy said look I want you to do this as the camera pans I want it to go Shh. And uh, and the, the the picture editor said, well, "Hold on a second. He said, "Let me tell you something about editing, young man. <laughs> you never ever draw the audience's attention to what the camera is doing, because it's all about the performance. The camera is the audience. We never celebrate what the camera is doing." And we certainly don't draw attention to it with a sound effect. It's crass. It won't work. Um, Guy and that picture editor fell out at that moment. Uh, someone else was brought in, and the whooshes went on. And the Guy Ritchie sound design, and uh, you know, that the, the, the he developed with Matt, Matthew Colling, who who. Uh, who was his sound design? Who was his sound designer? And and Danny Sheehan, who was his sound designer? Who we went through? You know, they still work alongside me very closely. We're still together, us guys, and and that became Guy's sound design. And you know, and so a Guy isn't. You know, he doesn't get the credit he deserves for actually. You know, almost before that point, before Lockstock, people weren't punctuating whip pans with whooshes. They weren't. You know, they weren't celebrating camera moves with sound effects. Now, today, with you and I talking, it seems like the most natural thing in the world. That's filmmaking, right? Well, it wasn't really a big thing until Guy did it on Lockstock. Where did Guy get it from? Guy, at that point, Guy was a, a third Dan karate guy. Okay, he'd been he'd been training karate since he was a kid. He had a love of Chinese kung fu movies out of Hong Kong. And of course, in that genre, you put wishes on camera moves. It's no, you know, that's normal. You put wishes so, on everything. Yes, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that, you know, he brought that style and put it into a British gangster movie, and that almost became, you know, as well as Lockstock changing British movies um, for many, many reasons. It also, it, it also changed sound design in movies. I think. 